If 2024 hasn't been quite a banner year for the genre so far, it has nevertheless offered up its fair share of terrifically original and savagely crafted offerings. But as with any movie genre, they can't all be great, and in fact some of them are inevitably going to be very, very bad. From the lowest budget slasher flicks conceivably to a glossy studio horror sent out into thousands of cinemas worldwide, these horrors run the gamut from failed ambition to straight up creative bankruptcy. If morbid interest gets the better of you and you decide to watch them anyway, you've certainly been warned. I'm Sean Ferrick for What Culture Horror, and here are the 10 worst horror movies of 2024 so far. Just a quick editor's note as well before we go on. Of course, all taste is subjective. If any of the films on this list were actually one of your favourites, that's cool too. We support that, and you are not wrong. Jumping straight in at number 10, it's Humane. First up, the Nice Try Award goes to Humane, the directorial debut of David Cronenberg's daughter Caitlin, which more than any other film on this list bungles one hell of an enticing setup. Humane takes place in a near future where global catastrophe has forced every country on earth to cull 20% of its population. The story revolves entirely around a family dinner where wealthy patriarch Charles, played by Peter Gallagher, reveals to his children that he and his wife have signed up for the nation's euthanasia program. Soon enough, all hell breaks loose. It's certainly a neat premise for a claustrophobic single day, single location horror flick, yet despite solid performances from the likes of Jay Baruchel, Emily Hampshire and Enrico Colantoni, the script's social commentary, i.e. privilege and environmentalism, is eye-rollingly superficial, lacking the visceral bite of the timely horrors produced by both her father and brother Brandon, possessor, infinity pool, Humane goes around in circles too often throughout its sluggish 94 minutes, bashing viewers over the head with its message ahead of a hugely underwhelming ending. Though easily the best movie on this list, given the pedigree both in front of and behind the camera, it's such a letdown. Number 9. Founders Day. A politically tinged comedy horror flick so facile it makes the likes of The Purge and The Hunt seem nuanced by comparison, Founders Day isn't clever, thrilling or funny enough to deliver on the more intriguing provocations of its premise. As the bodies begin piling up in the lead up to a tense mayoral election, there's frustratingly little here to savour beyond the fun, if derivative, killer's founding father inspired getup. The toe-curlingly iffy dialogue is one thing, the blunt commentary on political division is another, but it's the frustratingly tame kill sequences that truly rob the film of most interest. And without getting into spoilers, if you're at all au fait with the genre's tropes, which is reading this list, you probably are, you'll likely see the bigger reveals coming at least a mile off. The scream influences are fierce throughout, Yet this defanged genre satire is curiously lacking in an exciting voice or compelling perspective. Number 8. Baghead. A rather flavourless mashup of three hugely superior recent horror flicks, Barbarian, Talk To Me and Cobweb, Baghead is about as formularic as genre fans have gotten this year so far. The story follows a young woman, Iris, played by Freya Allen, who inherits a pub from her estranged father, only to learn that there's something in the basement, the titular shape-shifting creature who can transform into the dead. Despite some solidly spooky visuals and a worthy leading performance from the rising star Freya Allen, the overabundance of highly dubious character designs, mouldy jump scares and general lack of ambition to be anything but highly unoriginal make it a recommendation only to the most unfussed of horror fans. It's certainly more polished and professionally crafted than a good number of the movies lower down on this list, but if you listen closely enough you can hear the mechanical storytelling creaking throughout. It's a totally textbook horror film that plays it aggressively safe at every turn and is therefore totally uninteresting, if hardly awful. Number 7. Shaitan. In the very least, Shaitan, a remake of last year's Gujarati horror Vash, superficially appears to be something different to every other movie on this list. The highest grossing Indian horror film of all time, Shaitan follows a family who attempt to disentangle their daughter from a black magic spell cast by a mysterious stranger. Yet, neither the film's cultural specificity nor its evidently lofty budget can quite do enough to elevate it above its unintentionally goofy execution, generic array of thrills and brutal 132 minutes at runtime. Aside from a fittingly menacing performance by R. Madhaven as the villain, most of the film's concerted attempts to be dark and moody come off instead as comedic, yet not enough to maintain consistent so bad it's good appeal all the way to the belated finish. Again, it's made with greater care than most of the films on this list, but tonally it's an absolute train wreck, and would have benefited from being about 30 to 40 minutes shorter. Number 6. Bloodline Killer 
If its woefully unimaginative title didn't clue you in, Bloodline Killer contributes nothing new to the slasher genre. Even with an amusingly eclectic cast, including Saw's Shawnee Smith, Orange is the New Black's Taron Manning, Oscar nominee Bruce Dern, and Tyrese, this is a staggeringly dull offering that's pointlessly padded out to a stamina-annihilating 105 minutes for some reason. While it tries to have more on its mind than a typical slasher, its exploration of trauma leaves much to be desired, feeling like an ersatz undercooked take on Halloween 2018. Smith gives a decent enough performance considering the ropiness of the material, but from the forgettable plot and characters to the mediocre death scenes and lackluster killer named Skeleton, there's basically nothing here that raises the pulse. Cut 20 to 25 minutes of naff padding out and you've instantly got a better movie, albeit one that's probably still not worth your precious time. Number five. Night Swim. A movie about a haunted swimming pool that kills those who take a dip in it could have been absolutely a riotous time if the filmmakers had struck the right tone, but it's almost impressive just how boring filmmaker Bruce McGuire has made that attention-grabbing premise. Bafflingly refusing to lean into its inherent silliness and instead adopting a dour tone throughout, Night Swim strands the talented likes of Wyatt Russell and Kerry Condon in a bland supernatural horror flick that does little interesting or memorable with its intriguing setup. Even accepting the limitations of a PG-13 horror movie, nothing in terms of the film's mythology or its shockingly lacklustre body count move the needle at all. And so, while this boasts solid visuals and capable performances, it's otherwise a disappointing, glacially paced snooze fest even at just 98 minutes in length. The lesson here is some horror shorts should just stay as horror shorts because they don't all have feature film mileage. Number four, imaginary. Conceptually, there's certainly potential in a horror film centred around a child's not-so-imaginary friend, and Imaginary gets few points for its memorable creature design. But for the most part, this is more genre slop from Jeff Wadlow, who also made Truth or Dare and Fantasy Island. Much as we all often joke about generic modern film scripts feeling that they were produced by AI, it's entirely believable in this case. The movie stays in a low gear from start to finish, waltzing through the predictable, played-out supernatural horror beats without a single sliver of invention, beyond a few unintentionally hilarious moments. Moments, this is a horror film unlikely to make you feel much at all, except boredom. Much like Night Swim, it probably would have benefited from an R rating and an overall nastier tone, but instead it's a toothless, teen-skewing gateway horror flick that's already been swiftly forgotten by the masses. Number 3, The Strangers Chapter 1. The Strangers Chapter 1 is precisely what you'd expect from a new standalone Strangers movie curled out on the cheap by Rennie Harlan. Packed to the gills with tired genre tropes, wonky dialogue, dodgy performances, and inexplicable character logic, this is a soulless retread of the 2008 original that offers nothing in the way of subversion that might make it worthwhile instead of just re-watching said original. Even the things it adds to the story ultimately only detract from the chilling ambiguity of the titular villains themselves, ensuring that it panders only to the most easily pleased of genre fans. This is as basic assembly as theatrically released slasher fix get, and yet it doesn't even have the good grace to at least deliver some garden variety suspense and unease. Worse still, two sequels are already on the way, because Lionsgate had Harlan shoot an entire trilogy of Strangers films back to back in 2022. Yikes. Number two, Camp Pleasant Lake. While one absolutely wants to root for the low-budget horror flicks to do something creative with their minimal resources, Camp Pleasant Lake is fatally unambitious and derivative even for the through-the-floor standards of most slasher flicks. The concept is at least workable. The site of a former tragedy has been reimagined as a macabre horror-themed camp where attendees can witness staged killings for their own entertainment, only for a real killer to show up and start offing them. Yet, Camp Pleasant Lake is neither campy enough to have fun with its ridiculous concept, nor full-minded enough to offer up a meaningful takedown of grief tourism, and those who seek to exploit tragedy for material profit. The dialogue and performances are very bad, which when coupled with the brutally low production values and hilariously predictable reveal, add up to an especially uninspired Friday the 13th knockoff that'll evaporate from your memory within days. Number one, Taro. Nothing screams, creativity is dead, quite like Hollywood bankrolling a movie about killer tarot cards. And while a campy, gory B-movie about a group of teens who get offed in a variety of ridiculous Final Destination-inspired ways as envisioned by a tarot deck could have made for a giddy time, this ain't it. Though competently made from a visual standpoint, Taro's script has all the rough-hewn hallmarks of we frantically scrawled this on a cocktail napkin the night before shooting, while making a hugely fatal misstep, 
taking itself far too seriously. But Taro's biggest crime? The centerpiece kill sequences are achingly lacking in imagination. And worse still, the film's frustratingly permissive PG-13 rating means there's not even any gnarly gore to savour. Props to the actors for delivering the stale dialogue with a straight face, but for the most part, Taro doesn't even satisfy as a schlocky trash fest you can have fun laughing at. Yet because Sony produced it for just $8 million, it turned an easy profit at the box office, so don't be shocked if Taro 2 slinks into cinemas soon enough.